Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. With the clapping of our hands, with the lifting of our voice, we can give God praise. For it's another day he has blessed us to see, another opportunity we are alive, and we thank God for this chance. And we thank God for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord, even viewing one more time. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That you have the liberty to clap your hands, you have the liberty to give God praise, to lift your voice. Here at First Baptist Church of Highland Park, God, we thank you, God. We ask that you bless us even now. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Oh God, we need you like never before to give us strength, oh God, because you are the source of our strength, you are the strength of our life. And we lift our hands, we clap our hands, and give your name all the praise and give you all total praise that we have within us, oh God. Everything that we have, we give it back to you, oh God. So please receive our worship, oh God. Please receive our praise, oh God. We thank you for everyone that has taken the time to come into the sanctuary or even to join in wherever they may be. Oh God, you get the glory out of everything that happens today. Oh God, we ask that you bless us in a mighty way. Everyone that takes part in worship, oh God. Oh God, we love you. Bless Pastor Davis, bless him now, oh God, and strengthen him again for another opportunity to give a word that will encourage us to be more like you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. We want the glory of the Lord to rise in this place. We want God to be seen in everything that we do. It's not about us, it's not about the men, it's not about the... The singers, it's not about the preach word, but God, we would get the glory out of everything we do. So the song simply says this, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Rise among us, let the songs of the Lord rise among us, let the joy of our King rise among us, let it rise. We say, oh, let it rise. We say, oh. Let the glory of 
filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving. What are we going to do? We're going to bless thee, O oh Lord. We're going to bless thee, O oh Lord. Come on, let's bless him, let's bless him, let's bless him. With the fruit of our lips, with the clapping of our hands, with the lifting of our voices. He's worthy to be praised. Hey, 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 it, we need the glory of God, and we welcome you to worship at the City on the Hill, First Baptist Church of Highland Park. We are Bible-believing, Christ-centered, and Spirit-led, and we need your glory. Come on, let's put our hands together in the joy of the Lord. We're going to stand, and we're going to sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. The words are going to appear on the screen as we sing to the glory of God with the, with the mighty men of God. Yes. Come on, church. There is. There is a
It's prayer time, and if you want to come to the altar for prayer, and this is our first invitation. If you know you want to give your life to Christ today and you want to join church, you can come at this altar right now, and we can, after we'll pray, we can, you, you can become a part of our family. You don't have to wait until later. By later in the service, you can be an old member. When did you join? At 1053. Amen. But you can come. We bring our concerns, our issues to this altar because we know God not only hears our prayers, but answers our prayers. Someone needs a financial blessing. Someone has a physical issue, family issue. If you want to kneel at the altar, you find a kneeling spot and find a kneeling spot. Find a kneeling spot. And we come, we come, we come. And if you want to join church, you can come too. Come on, Dr. Glover. Come on, work your way over here. You want to pray again, man? We're not letting you go back to North Carolina with one prayer. You got to pray multiple prayers. You come here. Amen. Dr. Rodney Glover's in the house. And he's a, and he knows Jesus, and he's going to stand in the gap today. Amen. I'm praying for miracles. Come on, give a great hand to Dr. Glover. We're glad to have him back in the house. He's in the house virtually all the time, but we're glad that he's here physically. Go ahead and pray, Don. Let us bow our hearts before the Lord. Gracious Father, we come again today saying thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. God, we thank you for another opportunity, oh God, because your word declared, let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So God, here we are making noise to bring joy to your name, oh God. We come bringing glory. We come bringing honor. We come worshiping and praising you today because there is none like you, oh God. Father, we thank you for this house, oh God, this branch of Zion, how you just Keep on making ways. Keep on opening doors, oh God. Continuing to use us, oh God, to lift you up because your word said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me, oh God. So help us, oh God, to keep lifting you, oh God. Father, we ask that you would bless this service, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Do what only you can, oh God. Break down barriers and strongholds. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood against everything that's not like you and of you, oh God. Bless our pastor, oh God, as he stands on the wall one more time. Anoint him afresh, oh God. Use him, oh God, for your glory and your honor. And God, we just say thank you. When we can't say anything else, God, we say thank you. We thank you in the midst of our trial. We thank you under our trial. We thank you above our trial. God, we just say thank you. Because you're so good to us. And we pray these blessings in the name of your son, Jesus, the mighty Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. And amen. And if you're around the altar and you want to give your life to Christ, join church, rededicate your life, you can come meet me right now. I want to shake your hand and congratulate you. But if you're in the house, won't you come? God, Yes. Smile you want to join me. church today? Maybe. He's been He's dedicating his life to Christ to today. Me. Come on, celebrate. Where are deacons? Where are deacons? Come on, deacons. Oh, He's rededicated. God Beautiful. Man. Beautiful. Anybody else want to come? You don't want to wait till later. Come on right now. Come on, come on. The angels are rejoicing over one. God, God has. Smile on me, he has set, he has set me free. Look at God. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Put those verse, put that verse to a name. You don't know the verse. God. Joe Jones, he used to know the verse. Smile on me, yes. He has set me free. free.
together our sunbeams are coming now come on sunbeams amen Give it up for the sunbeams. Make some noise. Can we give God praise one more time? We serve a risen Savior, and his name is greatly be, to be praised. And we call his name Jesus. Can we all say that together? Jesus. His name is a great name. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. So the sunbeams are going to sing and call his name today. Help me call his name one more time. Say, Jesus. Come on, let's sing it right here. Jesus.
this song, and the song is entitled, Whose Side Are You Leaning On? Whose side are you leaning on, church? You ought to say the Lord's side. I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Come on, clap those hands, everybody. Come on, let's give the sunbeams a great hand. Amen. We're certainly delighted, excited that you have chosen to be with us today in worship. And we welcome you to the City on the Hill, First Baptist Church of Highland Park. We are Bible-believing, Christ-centered, and Spirit-led. And great things are still going on right here on our grounds. And we give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Let me thank all of our volunteers for yesterday with our grocery and food distribution that took place. Also, I'm grateful for so many of you who met us on Friday night. We had a special dinner reception orientation for our new members. And we had a crowd downstairs on Friday. And it was a blessing to see so many of our members, also leaders, to come and to welcome new faces into our church. So we are excited about that. We're so, so delighted in this service uh, to have the uh, sisters of Alpha Kappa Alpha Psi Epsilon Omega chapter. They're celebrating their 17th charter anniversary, led by Deacon a, a Deatrice B song, stand up, AKAs, amen. 
And any other AKs in the house, you can stand up. Any other AKs in the house, amen. We thank God for them sharing with us today. If you, anyone else is visiting and you are a first-time guest, first time you've ever come through these doors, and you're here today not by accident but by God's providence, won't you stand if you are a first-time guest today? And again, we are certainly grateful. Come on, give a great hand to those who are here for the first time. And if you're near first time who just stood up, please reach around. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you over there and up there. And if you're near one of them, please let them know. I'm a member of Highland Park, and I want to welcome you to our church. And it, it might be your word, warm words of welcome that might help them later in this service to make a wonderful decision and to be a part of our family because we are indeed just that. We've been known for many years as the friendly church on the hill and we are still praying that we still have and show the love of Jesus Christ in everything that we do. We are just excited, delighted that you are with us today. Even later in this service, we've got babies we're going to bless and we thank God for their various families, and we look forward to praying over uh, these wonderful children who are with us today. And we thank God for each of them. But right now, it's preaching time. And we thank God for the word of God, the mighty men, and they got it warmed up. We had great worship last night. And again, we're back this morning. And if you ever wanna come join us on a Saturday night, feel free. Look at your watch, not your clothes, because we have great worship on Saturday nights at 6.30 as well. But these wonderful men, and I need to tell every man, we have a weekly Bible study every week, 7 o'clock in the chapel. We Several weeks ago, we went over, and we consistently over 100 men who come and study the Word of God. Some of them come to the Bible study before they come to church. And then after they come to the Bible study, I gotta, I gotta come back to this church. And so brothers, thank you for being evangelistic like that. But they're gonna bless us in their own way, the mighty men of God, and then we share the gospel message. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. There are certain things that only God can do. Only God can do it. There's a song that says, only God can do it. Only God can make a way. When I was in trouble, he came to my rescue. Nobody but you, God, stepped in for me. Come on, clap those hands like this. Come on, right here. Down home. Thank you. 
in this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in our midst. And even now, as we get ready for the proclamation of your word, save those who are in darkness. Reclaim someone who is backslidden. Someone who is a Christian but needs a church home. Guide them today. Knock on the doors of our hearts and let us say yes to you. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. In thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, think with my mind, speak with my voice, allow more of you to be seen and heard. And not just to be hearers of the word, but doers. And we thank you, dear God, for this time we can spend together. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Come on, let's clap those hands together. We stand if we can as we honor the word of the Lord as we look at the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 13. That's our spotlight this Sunday in our worship experiences and peeling our eyes in this passage to the 24th verse, Matthew's gospel chapter 13. Verse 24 and following. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this. The farmer exclaimed, Should we pull out the weeds, they asked? No, he replied. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. Let both let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles, and burn them, and to put the wheat in the barn. Amen. Thus far, the words of God. You may go to your seats around the building. I come back to verse 30. A clause, let them both grow together until the harvest. The end of the 29th verse says, no, he replied, you'll uproot the wheat if you do. But the question was asked in verse 28, an enemy has done this. B clause, should we pull out the weeds? Should we pull out the weeds? Should we pull out the weeds? Should we do it? Should we pull out the weeds? Here's my title. Who do you think you are? Should we pull the weeds out? Who do you think you are? The text is an interesting one because it is a parable. A parable, biblically, is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And it is in this particular parable that Jesus is indeed teaching a lesson. Again, the lesson will focus on our own uh, sense of importance, if you will how critical we are, how important we are. But then we look at the reality of what we are not, where we fall short. All of us need God. All of us need relationship with God. I say to persons all the time, I'm grateful for those who are members of the church, but first we need to be connected to Jesus. My connection to Jesus is then my desire to know what the word says. Next level to that, how I uh, will apply the word to my life. Who do you think you are? The reality of it is that, some, that one of the things that gets in the way of spiritual progress is the sense of arrogance. Arrogance. This, this sense of being holier than thou. I, I said it this way several years ago and I reminded it's those persons 
may feel who have spiritual amnesia. In other words, you don't remember, or at least you try to act like you don't, how you once were. Well, the, real, the, real, the realization is, is that the life of faith is not always going to be a straight road. And part of the reason why it's not going to be a straight road is because we're dealing with spiritual warfare. And that's, that's what we want to look at in this, in this service and setting. That reality of less of me, God, and more of you. I, I, I want you to be out front. I, I want you to take the wheel. And I said it in the invitation earlier, you don't want uh, to wrestle with God and win. Because if you win in wrestling against God, you lose. You lose the potential of blessings that uh, Reverend Hill can be sent your way. And so you want to make sure that God gets all of the glory. Well, there, well, there, there are several things that we want to look at in this service. Human lenses are different from divine lenses. Let me break that down. God's eyesight is different from our eyesight. Our eyesight, we can look at a person and make a certain decision. We've heard it said, don't judge a book by its cover. And many of us have made wrong decisions because we've dealt with the outside, not seeing the inside, which we can't see. So some of it, again, is a faith step. It's a faith look. I'm looking at it, and I'm praying about it. I'm praying about it. Now, who's in your circle of friends? Who, who is it that you feel comfortable dating? Uh, or whatever those dynamics are, you've got to make sure that your lens is not always going to be the lens of God. Second thing. Staying spiritually awake is most important. When you're sleeping on the job, oh yeah, it's dangerous. It's dangerous to sleep. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. They're still trying to figure out what happened with that vehicle that ran into the key bridge. What happened? And many times after some automobile accident, uh, track the trailer. Sometimes they want to make sure that the operator was fully awake. And then we've got some long distance drivers in our church. And one thing you've got to be careful with when you're driving long distances is to have adequate rest. Yes, I was talking to a bus driver one time who had driven so many miles and, and matter of fact, he had driven so much that he was driving down the New Jersey turnpike and he saw railroad tracks. And he stopped his vehicle, but he realized he didn't see railroad tracks, but, he was, but because of fatigue, fatigue made him see railroad. So somebody in that day was seeing a, a, a bus stop in the middle of the New and you know that's not a good place to stop. Just like you don't want to see something stopped on the beltway or something else. And, and when everything is moving along. And so staying spiritually awake is most important. And the third thing is, the devil can come from so many different directions. You don't know where he's coming from. I, I, was, I was earlier looking at this sense of wheat and weeds. And the reality of it is, you could be sitting next to a weed. No, no, don't, don't, don't look, don't look, don't look. Keep, keep, keep it here. You could. I didn't say you are. I said you could be sitting next to a weed. And, and, and weeds, for anybody who loves gardening, a, a gardener doesn't like weeds. You don't like weeds. Here you got nice, beautiful flowers, but in the midst of that, 
you got to deal with some weeds. But here it is, I said it earlier, that the, all of us have to grow together. And, and sometimes there can be a transformation of the weed. Because in other words, let me put it this way, we have in this room now some transformed weeds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about the weed you smoke, but I, 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 I'm talking about you are a transformed weed. Come on, stay with me, stay with me. Don't, don't run down the street. But the reality of it is the devil can come from so many different directions. Let's, let's, let's back it up. Let's unpack it. Number one. Human lenses are different from divine lenses. Look at, look at verse, verse number 29. No, he replied, you uproot, uproot the wheat if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles, burn them, and put the wheat in the barn. Here's what I need to say. There are some people who are more skilled at running people away from church. Okay, okay. And are we on? They, they, they are skilled. They, they can look at all the flaws, all the problems. They can point out everything. But I, I could ask that same person, how many persons have you invited to Christ? And, and, you, and you will find the ones who are still with running folk away are not the same ones trying to get folk to come in. They, they, are, they, are, they, they have marked their territory. This is my church, my seat, my service. It's not about us, it's about God. And, and, and you, we have to always leave room for the spirit to move. It says, it says, it says, I will do the separating, uh, but you don't have to do it. I'm not asking you to separate anything. As a matter of fact, I'm telling you, I want you to catch the fish, but I said nothing about cleaning the fish. You catch it, I'll clean them. And that's what the Holy Spirit can do with us. The Holy Spirit can clean our lives up. And you know that the cleansing process is going to be a process. It's not one time. You got to do it several times. Sometimes when you go dealing with a, a, an issue, you got to go back to the doctor. You don't, you don't go to the doctor one time. You go back and you go back again because they want to check your progress. And when you look at it, that's what worship is. Worship is a way of me checking my progress. I'm coming in the house. I, I know I've got a long way to go, but I thank God I've come a long way and I'm not who I once was. And I keep coming and the Spirit's going to keep working on me. I keep reading the Bible. The Spirit is working on me. I keep praying. I'm not, I know I'm not perfect, but the Spirit keeps working on me. I keep sharing my faith and the Spirit keeps working. He said the moment is going to come, Matthew 13 verse 30, that I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles and burn them and put them and put the wheat in the barn. You have to decide are you going to be weed or wheat? You got to decide whether you're going right or left. I, I, and, and then the reality of it is that, let me look, when you are a Christian, it says you get down to the harvest point, you're going to be gathered in the barn, but you already still, you already get blessings in advance. Flip side of that. Why live in this world, catch hell, come on somebody, Oh, confuse, have a whole lot of confusion and then die and go to hell. Come on, somebody. Summertime is coming. It's going to be hot as... Oh, okay, I'm not going to say that. But why are you going to go through all of that and then not make heaven your choice? 
And it is, Reverend Davis, a choice we make. We don't get there by osmosis. We get there, Sister Flores, because we've made a choice. I've made Jesus my choice. And so the sorting is going to come. And then, as I told you on the service, I remind you that there are only two places to go after this. Heaven or hell. There is no purgatory. There is no middle ground. I, my relatives hanging in. I'm going to bring a big offering. No, 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 no. They are going one place or the other. And the great, and, and, and the thing is, see, some folk, when they want to get to their funeral and they want to have a, a nice funeral, and then and you'll find people who will get up and they will, they will get off script. Didn't you know this is a church funeral? Don't, don't tell, don't tell that, don't tell that. It's a church funeral. It's a church funeral. I want you to talk churchy about me. But you need to understand this. When you live your life, someone is always watching. But forget about what people see. It's what God sees. Because there's some things that I could hide from people, but there's nothing that I can hide from God. As a matter of fact, that's why we ought to be worshiping and praising God and giving God the glory because God loves us in spite of us, in spite of the things we've done wrong. He still says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I know you did bad, but here I am. And I have an open door policy. So my lens is not God's lens. And then the other thing I have to say, the second thing, Staying spiritually awake is most important. The devil wants you to be sluggish. Wants you to be sluggish. Wants, doesn't, want you, doesn't want you to be ready for the fight. And you've got to make sure. That's why your prayer life's got to be strong. You, you're getting yourself built up. Because the, you know the challenge is coming. It's not if the challenge is coming. It's when the challenge comes. And when the challenge comes, will you be ready? You ready. You ready. You want to be ready. Because, because the devil doesn't want you to be ready. You've got to stay spiritually awake. What, what we say, uh, Tabitha, you gotta, you got to be woke. Stay woke. Because you got to understand spiritually awake is the most important place to be. Look at verse 25. Verse 26 tells us very, very clearly. It says, but that night as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. See, the, the, devil, the devil is not going to announce himself. I'm coming, I'll, I'll, I'll be at your house at 3 o'clock. If I told, if the devil told you that, you'd lock up. I'll be at your house tomorrow at 3. No, he's not going to tell you what time is coming. He'll show up and he'll just be there. And you know this nothing but the devil. Come on, somebody. Somebody was trying to, get to come to church this morning and you know it was nothing but the devil getting in your way. It was nothing but the devil that was trying to, matter of fact, you even thought about it. I'm just going to go ahead and stay home with all this going on. But no, you press your way through. And sometimes you have to identify Satan for who he is. I know you're trying to mess with me. And, you're, and the only, only reason the devil messes with you, listen, listen, is because you are a threat. If for you were no threat, he could let you go. Because he knows you're on your way to hell anyway. <laughs> but if you're a threat, because anyone who's serious about their faith, you cannot keep faith to yourself. You have to share something that's blessing you. Because people are going to ask you, what is it that makes you different? What is it about you? And you know the only thing that makes you different is Jesus. 
If it weren't for Jesus, I would be a wretch undone. If it weren't for Jesus, I would throw him in the towel. If it weren't for Jesus, I'd be a mess. But look at me. I'm a miracle. Do I have a witness in here? I, I've come a long way. I might have a long way to go, but I thank God. I'm not where I once was. Who do you think you are? You, have, you, have, you are not perfect. You are not a, a saint. You might be an ain't. You're not a saint. Because, because we, we could be saints, but we can have sinner problems. Come on, somebody. Because you realize, you, you, I, I, I'm on my way to heaven, but even though I'm on my way to heaven, I still have to deal with spiritual warfare. I, Satan comes, the enemy, that's what, it's, that's what uh, is described in Matthew 13, 25, New Living Translation, calls him the enemy. The enemy came, planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. He planted it, then he slips away. He knows what he planted. And that's why I say you've got to realize that even though he knows what he planted, you already have the victory. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You already, he planted it. That's why when he goes back and looks, he said, I know they're going to gonna act a fool now. But then he said, wait a minute. They still praising God. They still giving God the glory. I knew I planted some stuff in their house. It's like if you, if you tried to, uh, somebody tried to poison you with food, food poisoning, but you still walking around. He said, wait a minute. Did they, did they have it? I thought I gave it to them. I know I did. But they're still walking around. You gave it to me, but I got a God who's bigger than you are. I, I have a God who knows more about me than I know about myself. Do I have a witness in here? I know that God can make I know he can fight my battles and answer my prayer and throw out the lifeline. Who do you think you are? You want to you be able to say, I'm a child of God. I've been bought with a price. I've given my life over to the Lord. And here it is. The third thing is, the devil can come from so many different directions. I want, I want to be awake. I want to be awake because he's slipping in. And when he slips in, he's always going to try to slip something in and do something to me. But the farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this. They exclaimed, and should we pull out the weeds? Do you want us to do it? You know, there's a whole lot of folk that they, they think that the church is on their back. Do you need us to take care of this, Reverend? We'll take care of it. You can't take care of anything. Only thing you can take care of is put it in the Lord's hands. And let the Lord work some things out. Some things is going to be difficult for us to take care of. But when we cast our cares upon him, he cares for us. Looks past our faults. Sees our needs. Makes a way out of no way. Lifts us higher. Fights our battles. Answers our prayers. Gives me a peace that's beyond understanding. I got joy in my heart. Thanksgiving on my lips. I get, I get dancing in my feet. Do I have a witness in here? When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I'm a, I'm a wretch undone, but I turn my life over to the Lord. When you turn your life over to the Lord, he will work it out. He'll pick you up, turn you around, put your feet on a solid ground. Do I have a witness? I love the Lord. He heard my cry, pitied my every wrong. I will, I will bless the name of the Lord. I'll lift up my hands. I'll give God the glory. No matter what you say about me, I was once a weed, but God has turned my life all the way around. And here I am. 
I'm not what I once was, but I'm climbing Jacob's ladder, and every round is going higher. Do I have a witness? And if you love the Lord, I don't need a rock crying out for me. I can cry out for myself. Do I have some believers in here? Bought with a price, saved, born again. I love you, Jesus. And you don't have to praise him because you don't know what the Lord has done for me, what the Lord is doing for me. I will praise his name, even if I got to do it all by myself. I got the glory. I've got the power, but it's not my power, but the power of a living Savior. Ain't he all right? Say yes. I love him. Yes. I'll work for you. I'll serve for you. I'll praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. 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 Who do you think you are? Without Christ, I'm limited. But with Christ, there is no limit to what God can do. Because when you allow God to take over, he can take ordinary and do extraordinary just by simply putting it in his hands. Who am I talking to today? Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart, but you, you, you brother, you sister, have to say yes to him. And if you say yes to him, there is no limit to what God can do. You might have a lot of weeds around you, and you're trying to fix the weeds, but I can't fix the weeds. I got to first fix myself. You got, you got little weeds and big weeds and ARP weeds and professional weeds and educated weeds and uneducated weeds. You got all kinds of stuff. But I want to know that God can take you where you are. And even in the midst of some weeds and even some folk who smoke some weed, I'm going to stand up for Jesus. I'm going to stand tall for Jesus. And there's no limit to what God can do. And if God is talking to you today and calling you, I'm not, I might not know you're here, but God does. And today is the day you say, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bend toward the weeds, but I'm going to move toward the wheat. The wheat are saved. The wheat or in the barn, the sweet are safe. I want to be in wheat. And I want to invite you right now, if you're in this church, you might have come for a baby blessing. You, you, you won't come, you won't, you're not going to miss your baby blessing. You're going to be right back for that. But if you're in this place right now, and you know I need Jesus, I need an anchor. I need to say yes to the Lord. I want you to stand up right now. Say, excuse me, make it down your aisle. Say, I'm, 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 I, I've, I've held out long enough. I tried, I tried to sit here as cool as I could. And I don't care who's around me. I know God is trying to speak a word to me. And if that's you, and you're in this place, I'm inviting you right now. Man, woman, boy, girl, stand up. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your boldness today. God's going to do great things in your life. And our deacons are going to give you some direction right here. She has said, I'm going to be first. But there's some others that I don't want to be first. She took care of that. And I want to invite you, man, woman. If you got some folk next to you who need to move, nudge them right now. Say, come on, let's go. We can do this together. We came to church together. Why don't we make a wonderful move for Christ today? Today. You might be with one of those families where we're going to bless a baby. You'll be back. You're not going to miss that. 
Come on, if you, but if you want to come, give your life to, you coming to give your life to Jesus. Come here, I want to shake my, now who's your, who's your parent? Miss Tanya, where's Miss Tanya? Come on down here, Miss Tanya. This child knows what she's doing too. You know what you're doing, huh? Praise the Lord. Come on, let's celebrate her. This is beautiful. That's your granddaughter. Beautiful. They said the little child shall lead them. Somebody else, somebody else. You, you're trying to hold out, but God is calling you. And if that's the case, you're in the riser, you're on the main floor, you're in the middle of a row. All you got to do is stand up, slip on down that aisle, and we would love to have you in our family. Let's help you with that. Come on, let's everybody stand. Let's free up some space. Come on, brothers. Put some words to that. But if you're here, you want to come. Come on right now. Two have already come. We love to have three, four, five, six. Come on, come on. Get to know Jesus. Get to know him. Get to know him. Come on, say it. Oh, oh, get to know him. I want to know him. I want to know him. I heard him. That's what I heard. Come on, here's enough. Keep going, baby. Congratulations. Now, who are your people? Tell me about Pop Pop to come on with you. Come on, Pop Pop. Come on, family. Come on. This is this Rogers family. This is beautiful celebration. Your baby. I know you gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. I heard. Do to the impossible. Somebody else wanna come. Come on. Get to know. Get to know Jesus. Somebody else wanna say yes. Yeah. Here's another one coming. A whole group of them coming. Come on. Come on. something were to happen to you this afternoon, would you be a person of just good intentions? Here it is. Here's the question. You, you go to heaven not because you're good. You go to heaven because you're saved. And you make, you make a decision to walk with Jesus. And today could be your decision. Matter of fact, somebody's out there right now you, you saying to yourself, this is, the, this is the, I never quite felt like this before. I feel like I want to come. Uh, I'm trying my best to hold back. I'm going to say this to you. Quench not the spirit. Let go. Let God. As I say to person, you don't want to wrestle, go through a wrestling match with God and win. Because if you win, you lose. Because I want, I want to be a winner because I want Jesus to be the center of my life. And today, somebody's out there, and this is, the, this is the, the closest you have ever felt like making a move for Jesus. And I'm saying to you, we got a whole community of folk praying for you. 
Matter of fact, I want every every Christian just to breathe a silent prayer that you would break the chain and help somebody to release and to come to Christ today. Take a moment and do that. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You just had all of these people praying for you. Now, you can move on the strength and the power of the prayers of others. Who am I talking to? Brothers, I want you to pick it up. But if, you, but if that's you and you want to come, I want you to come right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Say, excuse me. I got to do it today. I, tomorrow's not promised. Come on, come on, come on. Don't hesitate. Vacillate. Procrastinate. Come on, come on. I want to know. 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 Join church, boy. They enjoy church. Hey, oh, 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 oh. Get to know. Get to know Jesus. One more time, church. Sing it one more time. We say. wonderful decision. Now, do they know each other? Do they know each They don't even know each other. These little girls have been in the aisle clapping and dancing, don't even know each other. They just, they like fast friends right in church. Amen. They don't even know each other, but they just, both of them on the same beat and everything. Amen. But thank God for children enjoying worship. They cousins? She don't know her cousin? <laughs> okay, they do. They know, all right. I thought she said they don't know each other. They do know each other. Okay, well, you, all right. I'm, 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 okay, I got you. I, I was about to say, they the most in sync strangers I've ever seen in my life. Amen. <laughs> they cousins. That, well, that, that explains it. It's offering time. Let's get ready to give as unto the Lord. Our ushers are coming. And if you want an envelope to give, just put your hand up and we'll come to you if you want an envelope to give. Amen. Look at our young junior ushers are serving today. And they are looking good. They are looking real good. We've got some great junior ushers and we thank God for them. And, and uh, Tabitha, you were a junior usher back in the day. Amen. And so we thank God for our junior. But if you want an envelope, here's down front, down front. Need some envelopes down front? Anybody else want an envelope? Just put your hand up down here. We've got young feet right down front. Come come on, come on this way. Mer Marcellus is coming down. Come on, keep coming down, Marcellus. Get the others in front of you. Amen. We thank God for those who want to give, have desire to give, and we thank God for these wonderful young people. Amen. We're praying for them socially, academically, uh, praying for their safety. There's so much evil out there, and we pray against it. Amen. We pray that no stray bullets and no gang violence and no fighting in the bathroom. We, we pray over these young people in the name of Jesus, keep them safe and focused and not yielding to temptations and all the things that are out there in the world. We cover now these young people in the name of Jesus from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet. In Jesus' name, pray for our young people. We've got to keep praying for them, encouraging them because they have so much, so much, so much negative around. If we are a tithing church and we believe the first tenth ought to be given to God. Tenth off the top and we thank God that every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. And we joy in giving. 
and giving has allowed us to do so much in terms of international ministry and local ministry. We had several of our leaders in Summit, New Jersey today at the Lock Carry this past week, Lock Carry Foreign Mission. We'll have another group in Houston, Texas this week. And so we thank God for all the work we can do both on our shores and in other places. And so we thank God. And so you see the ways to give, uh, Givelify, uh, our website. Uh, of course, you can scan the QR code and you can share in that way. Givelify is a wonderful app to add to your phone as well. If you have your gift, your giving apparatus, won't you lift it up? Dear God, bless now each gift and giver. We give to God through the church. And we pray that, that persons who give to this church are sowing in good ground. Uh, whether it's our school, in terms of our new school that we're getting ready to open in the fall, or whether it's our senior housing that we'll break ground on later this year, or the many things that we do to lift up our community. We bless now each gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want to give, you want to walk to the front, you want to walk to an usher, ushers around with baskets, but we have no organization. Just come with a cheerful heart. And as we're doing it, all to the glory of God. Thank you, baby. That's so nice of you. Look at you. Look at you. Beautiful.
This is one of our members. She just turned 91. I've been looking for her. And uh, we thank God because you've been at this church how long now? Must be about 24 because I came here when my granddaughter, that's how old she is now. Wow. Uh -huh. We just glad. This is Sister Frances Lives. Come on, let's give her a great hand. Every year she'd have me, she'd bring down two big bottles of oil and we'd pray over them. She said, Reverend, I'm going to use this all year long, praying for folk. And we just thank God for her spirit and thank God for her being back in worship. Amen. Y'all sent me flowers. It was my birthday, a blessed day, and all like that. And I've been up since 7 o'clock trying to find something that I could put everything is too big, everything hurts. But if I promise God, if I can make a step up there, I still drive a little bit. Let me try three more months. <laughs> and I came here and I thank God I'm here. <laughs> And I was really, I was really looking forward. I was really looking forward to thanking God for the 91st birthday. And, and y'all never, I never got cards before. I mean, flowers before. That's a new thing. We just started that. Anybody that's 90 and up, we want to we wanna acknowledge anybody that's hit the 90 mark. And that's right. We're going to send you flowers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It was very much appreciated. I think on that Saturday, I had one of the best days because all my life, I said, I love children and I love old folks. But now that I'm an old folk, I still love us, though. <laughs> But the thing, the thing, the thing about it, my phone didn't wasn't working on, wasn't working on Saturday or nothing like that. And I and children that I had raised before they even came out of the womb, you know, they was all worried about me. All of them gathered to make sure Godmother was all right. And it, it was just a beautiful day. So. I was stumbling around that room. I hate to go my bedroom. I hate to go back to it because everything on the floor. But I was coming out there. If, like my goddaughter said, if I had to crawl, I was coming out there. But I thank God I ain't to crawl. I can still. Everything don't wear off until July or August. So, and I come out only when I have to. Only when I have to. Because there's nothing out there. And if I'm out, believe me, I'm going to be back at 430. In that house. <laughs> but this day, this, but this day, I just had to make it. And I know God was going to make me make it. But I just thank God I'm here. Come on, let's celebrate Sister Line. We're just glad to see her. We're glad to see her. We're glad to see her. We're glad to see you. To God be the glory. And the next thing, you got to have faith all of your life. My mama had faith. My mama prayed for me. See, I wasn't supposed to be out of ten or 11 children, I'm the only one. And has been the only one since I think about the 11th of 2011 or something like that. Whose report are you gonna believe? <laughs> Mama used to put that bottle of camper oil on that stove and heat it. 
broke my neck in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The doctor discharged me, I think, three or four years ago. I don't have to go for the, she cut another neck and all, I don't have to go for that anymore. I guess you say, you don't need this and I'm going on out like that. <laughs> so I was dismissed. So I've had a beautiful, beautiful life. And when I says I love children, believe me, I'm, I only had two, but I done raised mine and everybody else's. <laughs> Without any problem, I didn't say I didn't say perfect. Without any problem, all educated, smart doctor this and the, you know the physical, not, not the physical doctor and all like that. Everybody want to be Godmother's child, mm -hmm. and it was just blessed. I, don't, I mean, I, I, I'm just blessed. There was no way I wasn't going to make it today. And then y'all topped it off with flowers. Never got flowers. So I just, I just had so many things to get on in here and thank God for and thank the church for. Come on, let's celebrate Sister Lyons. Come on, Tank, you're going to be her usher back to her seat. Amen. Amen. Give her a great hand. Independent kind of people, I appreciate everything that people do for me, but I try to do this most. When I say it like that, I remember walking four, four miles in the morning during my working days. I I could do everything really almost. In 23, I stopped. I didn't stop. The body just said, hey, it's time to take a little rest. So instead of trying to walk the whole way, I walk as far as I can, and then I go back and sit in that chair, and I sit in that chair, and I sit in that chair. Yeah. And that's how I hear. But on things like was, which was important like this, I was um, bumping around in that room, trying to find something to wear. Everything like the rings and my body went down 103 and 100 and whatever. But God and my and 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 my uh, uh, heart doctor, we okay. He always, I can't find, I can't figure out how you can do all of this and whatever. With God, all things are possible. I'm a living witness, all things are possible. Those doctors that, 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 that my mama and them met at Glendale, that old hospital I was there in, in Glendale years ago, if they was around, I'm still here. Still here. Still praising. Well, no, 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 no blood relatives, siblings, and things. But I have so many children. You have seen, if you had seen them concerned about me Saturday when the phone, when the phones wasn't me and they was trying to reach me. They was there having a hallelujah good time because Godmother, Godmother was all right. And they said it couldn't, if they couldn't, if, if the phone wasn't working or something, they was going to get there somewhere if they had to crawl. So that, that, that's how good God has been to me. And I think years ago when you have a good life like I had, I was told to pass it on. Pass it on, thank God. And thank you, and God bless all of you. And I'm so happy to be here, so I'm going on back to the seat now. <laughs> Come on, let's celebrate her going back to her seat. Amen. Hallelujah. 
We have several babies we're going to bless. Come on, babies. You got your babies getting ready to get blessed today. I need the parents and their children to come join me in the pulpit. And then I'm going to gather families at the foot of the pulpit. We're going to ask those families who are here who are having babies blessed today, if you would come. Amen. You're going to help me with some pronunciations once you come. Amen. I'm not going to mess up any names yet. So you're going to help me. Amen. Sister Natalie, you said you had four or three? You have four on this list. There are four here today? Okay, where's the Massey family? Massey? That's Massey's, y'all. Okay. Okay, parents and children, all three of these being blessed today? One, two. What about this one over here standing? That, okay, come on here, right here, baby. She's drinking from a sippy cup, too. That's a fancy sippy cup. All right. So, where's your family? Come on, family. Going to stand right in front of her. Whichever family you're with, just stand right there in front of them. Whichever family you're with. All right. You the cutest. You the cutest. All right. Now let me find out who's who. Now who's he? Who's she? That's Drew. Drew Armani Rose Miles. Born April 25th. And we thank God for... Faith, who is here standing with uh, Drew and Father David Miles. And what about here? What's your name? Amaya. Amaya. Amaya McSwain, born January 3rd, 2020. And then this is Alaya McSwain. Come on, let's give God praise for the McSwains. Okay, okay, okay. Is that everybody? Is there anybody else? I want to make sure we got everybody. I want you to point your hands in the direction of these families. Dear God, we thank you for these families, these children, and even as we bless them t today, and we ask, dear God, that you'd be with them as they grow, develop, mature. In Jesus' name, amen. We're blessed today to have four girls, four girls that we're going to pray for today. And, and again, two in one family, one here, and that's Drew. And we're going to anoint them. We're going to pray for them. Now, we know that we today will bless them as babies. Jesus saves, and, and eventually... Each of them will have to grow to a point that they will have to accept Christ. That will have a lot to do with your witness, your walk, your reading the Bible at home, your going to worship. All of those things are things that you don't have to necessarily say, but they watch. And children are like sponges. They pick up everything. They pick up the things we don't even want them to pick up. But we pray today as we pray for them and we pray that as they will grow and develop that God is going to walk with them each and every step of the way. We'll pray first for, matter of fact, I'm going to anoint all of them. Then I'll back up and pray for them individually. Start with We'll work from one side to the other. We'll just come right across. 
And so this is Jania. Jania Drew Massey, born March 4th, 2022. Mother Jordan and Father Dennis, and of course we pray for this young, tender life. Come here, Dick Johnson, hold this. Lord, we pray for this tender life. We pray and ask your blessings upon her. We thank you for this moment, and we cover her. We see her family before her, and we stand in faith with this tender child. Bless her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless her to have a great life and do great things with health, wealth, and we cover her. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Who you want to go to? Mama, Dad. Okay, Mama. Going to Mama. Going to my Mama. All right. Now, this is, this is Drew. Come on, Drew. You can keep your sippy cup, too. I'm not going to take it. We pray for young Drew. We thank you for her family. We pray for her from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. We bless her today in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. We pray for her health. We pray that she would be a shining light with others and the light of Jesus would shine on her light. Bless her now as she's surrounded by such a great village of prayer warriors. We ask now your blessings upon her. In Jesus' name, amen. You a cutie pie. Here you go. Just like your mom. I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm not going to make you like you're not. But I thank God because she was born. Give me that paper, Deacon Johnson. And this is, this is the. Amaya. This is McSwain. And Amaya was born basically during the pandemic. And so we thank God that God has given this life. I can pick her up. She's not, she's not, she, I'm not that weak yet. <laughs> come here, baby. Come here, come here, come here. We got you. Lord, we thank you for this life. We ask, Lord, your blessings upon her. Bless her now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We bless her with success, safety. We thank you for this life, and we thank you for this family. We pray now, dear God, your blessings upon parents and godparents, all who come today. We ask, lift this child to you, in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. This will be the easiest one. Thank God for this, this tender life. We ask now your blessings upon this tender baby and those who gets blessed on the same day as her sister. And we ask now, dear God, you bless her in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, dear God, for this gift of life. Give her health, success, and all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's clap those hands together. <laughs> All right. Come on, let's give these families a great hand. Hallelujah. You can go to your seats. You can go to your seats. We're certainly blessed to have each of you to come and to share today. And again, we want to, we're grateful for each one who share with us today in worship. Do want to remind you, if you want to do the Mother's Day tribute, you can go out this door to your right, your left, um, my right, your left, and Mother's Day tributes as well as the Mother's Day breakfast. You can go out that room. Uh, also, 
um, mention, if you want to tune in to Reverend Tracy, where's Tracy? She's still here. Uh, she will be leading on Tuesday about moving through the grieving season. And tomorrow night at 6 o'clock is the Elevation uh, Career Network. And you can, you can connect with that. Uh, the first weekend of June is our education weekend. And we're going to celebrate all of our graduates. So make sure you go to the website so that we can get all of the information. That Saturday night worship, we're going to support your favorite schools, high schools, college. You can wear whatever shirts you want on Saturday night worship on the first weekend of June. And then you can sign up for the, our 5K. The 5K sign up is in front of the bookstore. Uh, the women's ministry daycation in the fall is sold out. Those who are in have to just finish their payments on that. Pancake breakfast, all that's through, the, through this door. And you can go through that door and you can sign up at that time. Let me find out any anniversaries in the house or anniversaries this week that you're celebrating. Please stand. Any anniversaries being celebrated. We certainly salute Warren and Cheryl Brooks who are watching us and they're celebrating, uh, it might be their 40th anniversary and we celebrate uh, the Brookses. But if your birthday, because this, 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 there's a person who's sitting all the way up top with a crown and been flashing all service long and I would imagine that that is birthday related in some way. Is your birthday today? <laughs> Stand up, Rev Jallo. I didn't even know that was you. I just knew it was, it was a light flashing all service long. So she gonna make sure we gonna celebrate her birthday today. Amen. Rev Nicole, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Anybody else got a birthday today? or tomorrow, or yesterday, or this week. is your birthday week. Stand up this week. Come on, let's celebrate them. Next week. Last week. But you here this week. All right. Praise the Lord. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Behind me. Birthday. Manual. Did I miss you for a service? I might have missed you. Oh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. And we thank God for those who are celebrating. Who else? Where? Yell. Is it a little kid? Oh, there you go. Happy birthday to you. Come on, Rum Rum John, Deacon Johnson, talk, take that little child a, a birthday gift. Amen. From the church. Amen. Happy birthday to you. How old are you turning? Nine? How, you don't look nine. Are you sure you're nine? Oh, okay, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. All right, you get it. You, because you look, you look thirteen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Happy birthday. Pray that you'll have a great week. Blessed week. We thank you for being in worship today. Let's stand up, everybody. We're ready to go. Thank you, AKAs, for celebrating with us. We're delighted to have you. I, I know we might, Beatrice might want to get an AKA picture. All right, we got to get an AKA picture. We got a picture of y'all. Y'all looking so good. All right. Dear God, bless us as we leave this place. Never your presence. And we thank you for all that we do to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Men, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, we'll be right there. One hour is all we need. And young men, welcome to come. But we have an exciting Bible study. Thank you, Dr. Glover, for your prayer, presence, and everybody else.